inequality.org defines the wealth gap as the unequal distribution of assets within a population. It then says, the United States exhibits wider disparities of wealth between rich and poor than any other major developed nation. In one of President Obama's speeches, he said, the combined trends of increasing inequality and decreasing mobility pose a fundamental threat to the American dream, our way of life, and what we stand for around the globe. I believe this is the defining challenge of our time. In America today, the wealthiest 1% of the population earns 19.3% of the total income, and the average income of the wealthiest 10% is 16 times that of the bottom 10%. The wealth gap has been steadily rising since the 1980s, the last time the wealth gap was as big as it is today was the end of the 1920s. What followed the 1920s as a direct result of the wealth gap was one of the darkest times in America's history, the Great Depression. By the end of the Great Depression, 15 million people were unemployed, compared to the 8.5 million people today. From 1930 to 1931, just one year, 2 million people lost their jobs. However, a large spike in unemployment is not the biggest problem a second Great Depression poses to America. When countries are in economic depressions, that is the time when radical groups are most likely to rise to power. After World War I, the Treaty of Versailles left Germany in economic ruin. Due to hyperinflation, German currency was worthless. The German people needed a political party to rebuild Germany and they were willing to elect any party that seemed strong enough to help Germany. Hitler took advantage of Germany's economic depression, and the Nazis quickly rose to power over Germany. A similar situation could occur if the wealth gap isn't lessened and America falls into an economic depression. But don't worry, there are two ways to shrink the wealth gap before it's too late. The first, ironically, is how the Nazis rebuilt Germany after its depression. The government needs to create jobs. Germany made jobs for thousands of people in two ways. The Autobahn is a highway in Germany that was constructed in the 1920s for the purpose of creating jobs to get Germany out of its economic depression. There are four means of job creation. The Autobahn falls under the most popular one, government spending. Government spending is just what it sounds like. The government spends money to create jobs. PRNewsWire.com describes it as, the government can stimulate job creation when it invests in projects that improve or create services. These activities could include releasing contracts to the private sector for infrastructure, defense, engineering, justice, etc. The second method of job creation is through tax incentives. Basically, the government agrees to lower taxes on businesses so the businesses can afford to hire new employees. However, lowering taxes on businesses too much can end up hurting the economy and forcing businesses to fire people. That is why this method is very risky. According to PRNewsWire.com, the more often there are major changes to tax structure and regulation, the more often there are major movements in rates of unemployment, either job creation or job destruction. The third type of job creation is when unemployed people form their own businesses. For the businesses that are able to get a successful start, this type of job creation is very beneficial. First of all, the previously unemployed person now has a large source of income. Secondly, the new business can hire a lot of unemployed people to further re reduce unemployment. Finally, the new businesses, with fresh ways of thinking, can often end up changing the industry that they are a part of. For example, like how indie games, like Minecraft, can change the video game industry. The fourth form of job creation is through creating new industries for jobs. Creating a whole new industry can potentially create millions of jobs very quickly. According to PR Newswire, the most difficult but the most effective way to create long-term employment is to create new industries. It truly is the hardest way, but the best way, to continually grow
own economy that can support its citizens with employment. An example of this method of job creation is the technology industry. Countless jobs have been created because of the innovation of the technology industry. An example of these job creation methods working in America is the New Deal. The New Deal was a series of jobs programs created by President Roosevelt during the Great Depression to help America get out of the Depression. A big part of the New Deal was the Civilian Conservation Corps camps. Boys ages 16 to 18 years would go to work at the CCC camps for a month to do projects to help beautify America. The boys would work on creating national parks or reforestation. According to History.com, the CCC was responsible for over half the reforestation, public and private, done in the nation's history. However, the real purpose of the CCC camps was to provide a source of income for lower class families. All of these job creation methods would help to redistribute some of America's wealth from the upper class and give it to the lower class, which would help shrink the wealth gap before the U.S. falls into an economic depression. Another way to shrink the wealth gap before it's too late is to make tax reforms. The government can change the amount of taxes it receives to help shrink the wealth gap. The first and most effective tax reform the government could make would be to decrease income tax and increase sales tax. This reform would be very helpful for two reasons. First, the decrease of income tax would help the lower class people keep the money they make so they can save up for education or job training. Second, the increase of sales tax would promote saving money and it would take some money from the upper class. The second tax reform the government could make to shrink the wealth gap is to give tax vouchers to people in the lower class. With these vouchers, they could afford education or job training and be able to make a higher income. The third tax reform the government could make is to tighten the taxes on inherited wealth. One of the biggest factors contributing to the growing wealth gap in America is inherited wealth. You need money to make money, and for this reason, it is easier for people born into rich families that inherit wealth to get even richer. Currently, there are laws in place to tax wealth passed down between family members, but there are many loopholes. Making reforms to fix these loopholes could lessen the problem of inherited wealth and shrink the wealth gap. Both job creation and tax reforms are viable ways to fix the massive problem of the wealth gap before it's too late and America enters a second Great Depression. However, it is unlikely that either of those solutions will happen unless a major change is made soon. That change needs to be made in the media. The reason the solutions haven't already been set in motion is because the media is afraid to report on the wealth gap for one simple reason. That reason is class warfare, which is the tension between different economic classes. News stations are afraid to report about the wealth gap because they don't want to be accused of class warfare. As John Oliver said, but the phrase class warfare is so toxic, the president actually had to stop talking about the thing he describes as a fundamental threat to the American dream. In conclusion, until the media properly reports on the wealth gap, no jobs will be created and no tax funds will be made to shrink the wealth gap, and it will continue to grow until America falls into a second Great Depression.